the note here in a little bit. Okay. Oh, I, I kind of messed up the box actually. Hold on. Here we go. Oh, here we are. All right. Pulling it out. I need your help, YouTube family, because now we have an official date for the next running shoe giveaway. The next one is now on the calendar, everybody, Wednesday. All right, here you go. Mark it down. Wednesday, July 17th, 7 p.m. Mountain Time, live here on this YouTube channel. And here's how you can help. Basically, we have so many shoes to give away. I'm going to commit to you at least 20 pairs will be given away at this next giveaway. And they're gently used running shoes that people like you have, have shipped to me. Uh, and I consider gently used basically anything under, preferably under 30 miles uh, in use. So maybe like four or five runs and you just decided, you know what, ah, these shoes aren't gonna work for me. Let's send them to Seth and then Seth can ship them out to folks who really truly need them. So if you could, Grab this link, send it to your teammates, your friends, your family members, anyone who needs help getting out the door, uh, lacing up a pair of shoes that they might be running around in really, really beat up shoes. And just so you know, it's for anybody around the world. And so you can spread this link to anyone around the world, but uh, you have to be there live. That's the trick because we do a live drawing out of a, actually no longer out of a hat. We, ha we do it electronically now. So Wednesday, July 17th, 7 p.m. It's so exciting. Live streaming is now almost, it's not quite, but almost live back on the channel. Let's open up this box that just arrived today. These will be a pair of shoes that we give away uh, at the next giveaway. All right, sound good? Oh man, and this is a shout out. I'm just gonna say a shout out to Maurice in Maryland. Thank you, Maurice, for your generosity, sending a pair of shoes to someone who can use them. Let's see what they are. Oh my, my. And like, listen, the cross country season is, is, is knocking on our doorstep. So I know, I know there's high schoolers out there or even middle schoolers, but probably high schoolers who just um, are working two summer jobs just to buy an extra pair of trainers or a pair of racing flats for the upcoming season. So this is, this is the moment to spread the word to them, okay? All right, here we go. Oh man, I actually, I, I actually, oh, here we go. Here's a nice note. Uh, at the He says, best of luck, Maurice. Seek beauty, work hard and love each other. Oh, thank you, Maurice. I'll read the rest of the note here in a little bit. Okay, oh, I, I kind of messed up the box actually. Hold on, here we go. Oh, here we are. All right, pulling it out. Oh my gosh. It's Nike. Oh yes, Zoom Flies, SP. All right, I'm just saying it right now. I'm pretty sure that's what these are. Yup, Zoom Fly SP's 11.5. Uh, it looks like size, it's a men's sizing, okay? Nike Zoom Fly SP 11 and a half, all white. I want these. Look at how slick those look. This is amazing. All right, thank you again, Maurice. Wednesday, July 17th, 7 p.m. You all are the best. I love you. All right, let's go run. And yes, the second video publishing today on the channel will be my first impressions of the Hoka Rincones at 5 p.m. Mountain Time today, Sunday, when you're watching this. If you're watching it when it publishes. All right, here we go. If I can start my car. All right, here we are, parking at a new spot. Uh, expanding my grass circuit. I'm back to grass, just uh, taking it smart, being being careful with everything, taking the Hoka ring cones out for their first impression runs. And uh, yes, we are gonna talk about a little bit of risk taking that's gonna be taking place in my life in the next, uh, yeah, in the next couple months. So I'm gonna fill you in on what I mean by that here in a little bit. But in the meantime, let's lace up. Uh, I'm excited. Basically, instead of just going on those big soccer fields, I'm going to expand to the, uh, this park that uh, is adjacent to the soccer field as well, just to slowly expand this mileage and volume in the summer of 2019. Oh man. All right, I guess I'll just leave it there. All right, let's, let's lace up. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, before we get going here on the run, just want to let you know that I was all in on Hoka after college for three or four years. I, that's all I wore because of the stress fractures I had in college, about seven, eight of them. I'd, I actually lost track of how many I had. Uh, due to, you know, high training, high volume, high intensity, I was just thinking to, my, to myself after college, huh, maybe I need to find a, a running shoe company that can absorb a little more of that impact with a maximalist cushion through the midsole. So I, I found Hoka, and Hoka was pretty young at this point. They were probably three or four years old. So anyway, that's been my experience. Um, I, but I've gotten a little away from them recently, so I'm excited to just explore the more the maximalist side of running shoes. Uh, gosh, oh man, it, it's interesting. It's interesting, I must say, that Jim Walmsley and Jared Hazen and these guys, like, I don't even, like, they're, they're, oh, their training is out of control and they're in Hoka, so anyway, food for thought. All right, let's go. And there we go. All right. Risk is going to be the key word for today. Risk. I'll get you the mileage back at the house and tell you about the pace and just how everything. I'll give you, I haven't given you a, a full update on the foot in a little while. So I'll do that back at the house. All right. Time to fire up. And we're not in the studio. Okay. Everybody just left. We had a little party tonight out here on the patio. Here's the fire still going. Not sure if you can see that down there. Uh, so I got to keep this a little quick because it's getting late and usually I'm about halfway done with editing at this point in the night. So it's going to be a late night of editing, but I do just want to wrap up my thoughts on taking risks in training and just being very transparent with all of you about what I'm attempting to do with my training moving forward. Uh, so I ran 10 miles today at eight minute pace. Uh, so not fast, but it was 10 miles. Okay. So this is the most uh, I've ever run. I've run since uh, March basically. And I just want to be very clear. I would not recommend doing this. Uh, this ascent in volume like I'm doing when returning from a bone injury, unless of course your doctor gives you the thumbs up, but you have to be very, very uh, careful when coming back from a bone injury. And I'll just say, I would, so what am I attempting to do here? In case you don't know, the Pikes Peak Ascent is August 24th, ladies and gentlemen, starting in Manitou Springs. It's a 13, it's a half marathon up a 14,000 foot mountain. So you start at basically 6,200 feet of, of elevation and you finish off at 14,000. And so it's what, a little over 7,000 feet. And it's, it's like, it's my bread and butter, butter my bread. Like that is the race that I love. I love uphill running. I love I love ultra running, but I might love mountain running even more. Uh, therefore, I've been excited. So 2018, I could not race the Pikes Peak Ascent because I was in New York for a wedding, so I couldn't, I couldn't race it. So this year, I've been like gearing up, getting very excited about the Pikes Peak Ascent. On August 24th, well, the injury pops up and I'm a little, you know, frustrated about that. Uh, but then uh, I, I, it's feeling better. I start training again and I've been, I think, pretty patient. But just so you know, I've had this like, you, you actually, you already know this. I've had this phantom pain, what I think is phantom pain in my foot uh, over the last, let's say, two to three weeks where I believe the bone injury, the stress reaction is healed, but I'm feeling something in my foot. But now, folks, well, first of all, after the 10 miles today, just to give you an update on the foot, it's a, it feels great. It feels, I can't, I'm, I'm trying to not get too excited because I've been dealing with this feeling. I'm just going to, it's not even a, it's not even a phantom feel, uh, pain. I'm, ca I'm calling it a phantom feeling in my foot with a stress reaction. So it's what? Today's July 6th. The race is August 24th. That's not that much time, okay? So I just wanna warn you, over the next two, three, four weeks, you're gonna see my ascent 
in volume increase a little, <laughs> quite a bit more quicker than I would do if I would if this race was not happening or if I was on a cross country or track team and other people were were relying on me staying healthy like it's just me like I can control my training I'm my own coach and so just I just want to be very transparent with you it's about to get exciting I'm about to throw down um, give me another three four five days of of this type of training and I'm going to be very very confident that the foot is now 100% back to goodness, okay? So I, I, I am so excited and I just wanna say like, yes, I am taking a risk in my training in the next month. I, I'm, I'm just being very uh, open with you about that and I'm excited about it because I, I know what I need to do <laughs> in my training in order to reach the goals that I wanna reach at the Pikes Peak Ascent. Like I, I know exactly what I need to do and it means I need to up the ante a little bit right now. And the question of the day, have you taken a risk in your training that has maybe paid off or maybe not paid off, okay? Either or, like have you taken risks that have worked out for the better? Let's try and focus on for the better, but maybe you took a risk and it just didn't pan out for you. That's fine to share that story as well. Sound good? I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Thanks for hanging out by the fire for a few minutes and we're gonna wrap it there. Oh, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Polka Rincon, first impressions, publishing at 5 p.m. today.